My number was 84,303 and I can't get, forget it for the life of me. I tried so many times to forget it, but I can't. I was completely dehumanized. How can a child of 14 hope people should die so that he will have a place where to sit? What has become of me? I should have been dead, you know, for thinking like that. You see, but that's how it was. You couldn't escape from Auschwitz-Birkenau. It was electrified fences with guards on top. I cannot forget things like that. You know, I forget so many things. You know, what happened to normal, but those things, killing babies, I could never forget it of only a thousand years. Thanks for inviting us in. Thank you. Yes, come in, come in. They said, if you want to go to Germany to work, we will take you to Germany to work. The first thing I said, I can't send, see any trains. She said, they're standing in front of you. And what was it in front of you? Trains, but not for human beings, you know. It, it was for cattle trucks. Mm. They opened those shutters and they started to take people in and you know they when they finished they couldn't close it it was so many people if anybody sat down other people were standing on him or sitting on him you know and, and they were dying one early morning the train stopped and through the slits of the train i saw the word auschwitz they opened those doors and there were German guards pointing right, left, right, left. All the people that went to the left were old people, disabled people, children, and also women holding babies. The guards came over to the women that were holding babies and told them to put the baby down, go to the other side. Can you imagine a mother do it? She wouldn't do it. They tried to rip that baby out of their arms. Ziggy's been back to Auschwitz many times, but now, at 90 years old, he's not going this year. So I'm going to go in his place to light a candle for him and for those that he lost. What you'll see in Auschwitz, you, you won't believe it. You won't believe it. You are looking at it. You, and, and you still think it can't be. It can't be. So I've just arrived here at Auschwitz and that is the sign that you see, the first thing you see as you walk in, that promise, which we know was not what happened, work sets you free. And even now it still feels an intimidating place to be. You've got the double sets of barbed wire, you've got the watchtowers above you. And you can get the sense of people arriving here with that promise about work setting them free with no idea about what was going to happen when they walk through these metal gates and it slammed behind them. The SS men who were running this process, they quickly understood that violence, beating, dogs, it is of course working, but then it can start panic. And panic in their work is something that they really try to avoid. And they very quickly learned that hope is a much better weapon. One of the senior officers walked up to the roof of the gas chamber, looking at the people who are standing uh, in, in front of the entrance, and he asked them a question. 
is there any tailor here? And, you know, someone raised their hand, I'm a tailor, wonderful, we need tailors, there will be plenty of work for you. And, and then people start, I, I, I'm a shoemaker, oh great, there are shoemakers. And, you know, but first, ladies and gentlemen, you need to go through disinfection, please go inside. And they almost happily entered into the building, not knowing what will happen. All we saw is big chimneys, it's smoke coming out. And we thought maybe they had their own bakeries. We didn't know about gas chambers. Or anything. Maybe the grown-ups did, you know. But we did not have a clue about it. So we're not allowed to film in the gas chamber. And actually, as you walk through it, you're asked to be silent in respect of all the many thousands of people who died in there. It's incredibly claustrophobic. The walls are really thick and the ceilings are low and you can see just the gap in the ceiling whether those gas pellets would have been dropped in and it's a chilling place chilling because you can see the beginnings of the industrial scale that this was done on what motivated how can one human do this to others this is the power of human hatred People really can hate others so much or think about them as not human beings, thinking about that they're better than others. And this is, this is one of the most challenging and most difficult lessons for us because it's so easy to call them monsters. It's so easy to tell they were bloodshed monsters, and, but they were not. They were people and they started believing in this world. I can and cannot understand it. You know, you think they were done by sugs wicked people like that. There were doctors, lawyers, engineers that were doing it, you know. And, and then they went home in the evening and they sat down with their wife and children and eating their dinner and listened to music, knowing what they did daytime. The worst thing up till today for me was there were two rooms, there were children's toys, children's toothbrushes, little shoes, and up till today, whenever I think of Bausch's Birkenau, that room is in front of my eye. So I saw that first gas chamber in Auschwitz. We're now in Birkenau, about three kilometers away from there. This is what they became. Look at the size of it. This is where people would have stood with their last few moments of their life and then they have to walk through. And in the far distance, you can see where the crematorium would have been, where they would have burned those many, many thousands of bodies. And it looks like this because a week before the camp was actually liberated, the Germans tried to destroy the evidence so nobody would know of the atrocities. Ziggy spent months in different concentration camps after he left Auschwitz-Birkenau and he never saw his grandmother, who he travelled there with, again. He was finally freed by British troops on the 3rd of May 1945 and the UK became his home. I always say in school, because, you know, students, they don't know, and they say, have you ever spoken to Hitler or met Hitler? I said, no, thank God. But I say, I would love to see him today for one reason. I want to show him my family, my two daughters, my four grandsons, two grandgirls and then four great, great ones. I'm at the memorial for everyone who died here and there's a message that I want to read to you. It says, forever let this place be a cry of despair and a warning to humanity. I've learned so much from Ziggy and I've learned so much from being here and mostly it's the impact of the scale of what happened. And also you have to remember that every story is like Ziggy's story. Every single person here 
had a family, had a mum, a dad, perhaps a child, a sister or brother. And that's what's really important for me to take away from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to light a candle for Ziggy because he couldn't be here with me and for all those people as well who didn't have the chance to say goodbye. Whatever you do, you must not hate. Hate is the worst thing that can happen to you. You'll hate everybody, including yourself. We are all different, but we are all human beings, nothing else.